Greetings, everybody. This is going to be part four of the Ark, part of the Tabernacle series. Actually, this is going to be on the Mercy Seat. And this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn to the book of Exodus, and we're going to go to chapter 20. All right, uh, we covered the um, ark in the last study, but this one's just kind of covering on the mercy seat. Chapter Exodus 25, verse 21. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Now, I covered this in a previous uh, lesson, but we're going to just briefly go over it. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1, these are the sons of Aaron, okay? And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. So evidently they didn't follow the instructions of the Lord to, to do the incense. That's what a censer was. Verse 2, And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. So you come to the Lord his way or you die. That's just the way it is. All right, let's go to Leviticus chapter 16. Verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord came unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Uh, we're going to remember about the veil. Remember when Christ died on the cross and the veil was rent from the top to the bottom? Yeah, keep that in mind about the veil. Uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. You see, he, the high priest could, uh, from what I understand, could only go in there once a year. And that was on the Day of Atonement. Uh, I think the you-know-whos call it the Yom Kippur. Uh, let's see. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat. And no, it didn't have holes from moths. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with a linen miter shall he be attired. These are holy garments before. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. So the Lord wants the outside clean, but he also wants the inside clean. And when you're washing your flesh in water, isn't this a representation of what uh, water baptism was in the New Testament? Oh yeah. Verse 5. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Okay. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself, 
and for his house. And he shall take the two goats, two goats, and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Ah, scapegoat. Hey, have you ever heard that expression? Oh, he's a scapegoat. Well, that's where this expression comes from. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Have you ever heard of the wilderness of sin? S-I-N? Yeah, they let this, the goat go. Um, what is the symbol of the church of Satan? The goat's head, right? You know? Uh, you know, there's a reason for uh, all this. So they let the goat go into the wilderness of sin. Basically, they're, I, I guess what, I, I, my guess is this, this is symbolic of casting Satan out of the camp. That's my guess. You know, the one goat was to be uh, sacrificed as a burnt offering, and the other one was cast out of the camp into the wilderness of sin. So take that goat of Satanism and kick it out of the camp. Get out of town, buddy boy. What did Jesus say in Matthew 25, 32? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And remember, goats are the symbol of Satanism. Look at Baphomet, B-A-P-H-O-M-E-T. Uh, look at the Rolling Stones album, Goat's Head Soup. That was one of my favorite albums of theirs. Until I understood what they stood for. I think in, uh, forget what year, but I actually got to see them in concert uh, in Orlando with Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen. I mean Hel Halen. And they sounded like they were drunk and stoned from the night before and hung over. They were terrible. Uh, before I knew better. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king send to them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm. And skip to verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, yeah. And there you have it, people. All right, back to Leviticus 16. Well, let's see. All right, verse 10. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself. Do you know what that word atonement me, uh, breaks down? At one mint. At one mint at one you try to make at, to be at one with god right uh to make an atonement for himself and for his house and he shall kill the bullock 
of the sin offering which is for himself, and he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. You know, after Aaron lost his kids, I bet you he's going to be very, very careful how he approaches the Lord in this matter. And I totally believe that uh, Aaron taught his sons the right way, but the sons were probably kind of flipping about uh, offering strange fire before the Lord. Uh, you know, the Bible doesn't give you the details of what happened, but uh, I'll guarantee you, they uh, they probably dishonored the Lord. Uh, that's basically what it boils down to be. And the Lord said, oh, I've had enough of this. And uh, he took them for a burnt sacrifice. Verse 14. And he shall take of the blood of the block and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. You know, that word, uh, that number seven appears in the Bible a lot. You know, the seven days of creation. Uh, yeah. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. Now, I'm not sure if this is in the Bible or not. Okay, this is what I've heard or read, uh, is that they took a rope and would tie it around the ankle of the high priest when he went into the Holy of Holies behind the veil uh, so that if the Lord killed him, you know, it was... No man could go in to retrieve the body. So they would uh, tie the rope to the ankle so that they could pull the dead priest out. Uh, I'm not, like I say, I'm not sure if that's in the Bible or not, or if that's just a tradition or a legend or whatever, but, you know, something to consider. Because if the high priest did things the wrong way, and the Lord killed him like he killed Aaron's sons, there was no way to retrieve him, his body. You know, so uh, I don't know. It's just something to, a little factoid, I guess. So, Verse 18, And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it on the horns, on the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat and Aaron shall lay both, both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins. Oh boy, that would take a while to do, you know. Uh, uh, to to confess all the sins they did, boy, if if they were confessing all my sins that I've ever done in my whole life, probably take a couple of years. But uh, yeah, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. 
And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offerings and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. See, you were ceremonial, ceremonially unclean. Verse 27, And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat of, for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung, and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls, and do no work at all, neither it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you, for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean, clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Isn't it much easier to uh, believe in Christ and the two commandments, love the Lord, love thy neighbor, and you know, we were supposed to live among our own kind, among our own people. Not this multicultural stuff. Uh, so then it was, you know, you were supposed to live among, you know, your own people. Then it was supposed to be easy to, you know, love thy neighbor. Instead of letting all these devil worshipers into the country i don't know verse 32 and the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes even the holy garments and he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation and this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So, now what was the mercy seat? Now there are two judgments in the Bible for the dead and uh, the few people that are alive when the Lord returns in glory. There's the judgment seat of Christ, which, in my opinion, is the mercy seat. And then there's the great white throne judgment. And anybody that appears before Christ at the white throne judgment, the way I understand it, they're damned. It's over. So you definitely want to be the, the judgment seat of Christ. See, the great white throne judgment, there's no Christian mercy there. And that's why it's called the mercy seat. Numbers 14, 19. It says, Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Deuteronomy 5.10 And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. See, only the heathens don't keep the commandments of the Lord. And it's easier to do the two commandments than it is to keep the ten. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, that keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments 
to a thousand generations. Oh, yeah. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. You want to know why uh, churches uh, discourage you from reading the Old Testament? Deuteronomy chapter 7, perfect example. When the Lord, verse 1, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, you know who the Hittites were? Uh, that was the that was who Esau married. Hittite, two Hittite women. The Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Oh, but, but Chaplain Bob, no, but now, now Jesus came and he wants us to love them and, and preach unto them and, and tell them, oh, Jesus loves you and died for you. Uh, no, I don't think so. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. I don't see anything about preaching to them, do you? Uh, maybe it's in a footnote in one of those modern Bibles, but uh, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shalt thou shalt not give unto the, his son, nor his daughter thou shalt take unto thy son. Don't do it, people. For they will turn away thy son from following thee, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. Yeah. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen, to be, chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Wow. Wow. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had swore unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy, mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face. Ooh. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He shall not be slack to them that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee thy covenant, the covenant, and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee, and he will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil, the increase of thy kine, K-I-N-E, that's an old English word for cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, and thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. 
Listen to this carefully, people. The Lord said, if you obey his statutes and his judgments and you do the things he says not to do, listen to this. 18. And the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Guess what? If you don't eat the things that the Lord said not to eat, like shrimp, shellfish, pig, you know, all those things have diseases. Oh, you might eat it and get away with it. You know, it's a health thing, not a salvation issue. Okay? The Greeks that came into faith with Christ, when Peter had his vision with the sheet coming down, Everybody will tell you, oh yeah, well the Lord said he cleansed these meats and you could eat them now. That's not what he said. He said not to call any man common or unclean because the Greeks that came to him ate pig. You know, the, the amount of lying that these demon nominational preachers do is just, it's disgusting. Yeah, we got to pass that collection plate around. And you know what? It kills me. People will support these devils. And then you try to tell them the truth and they call you all kinds of names. You know what? They deserve to be destroyed and you get sick. And yes, you can cook pig and you might not get sick, but you know what? Even cooked pig is, uh, causes health problems. Yeah. Uh, you know what clogs your arteries? You know why people have to have double and triple and quadruple bypass surgery on their heart? Pork fat. You don't believe me? Cook some bacon. Take the bacon grease, put it in a pan, and leave it overnight at room temperature. And look at how it turns into a, a solid mess. You want that in your arteries? And the Lord will take away all these diseases. And will put none of these diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And, the, and thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them. What? But, you know, if you listen to the modern preachers today, when David was facing Goliath, David would have put down his sling and his stones and walked up to Goliath and said, but Goliath, Jesus loves you. And then Goliath would have taken his sword and cut off David's head. Yeah. See, they don't even know who the Canaanites are. And they want you to think that they got salvation. All they got to do is believe in Jesus and they got salvation. Ugh. They don't even know what Genesis happened in Genesis 6. It's a shame. You know what? I don't care. You want to watch uh, television and sports and yell at the TV when your team scores a touchdown or a, or a home run? Go for it. Or gets a basket? I don't care. I'm really, I'm at that point. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for they will be a snare unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eye saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the peoples of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God shall send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from, be, from thee be destroyed. I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've ever been stung by a hornet, but there's a, there's a, a hornet, the Asian hornet, uh, in Japan, the thing is huge. It's like, I hear it's like three inches long. Uh, I've heard you can get stung by it one time and there's a good chance you'll actually die from anaphylactic shock. Their venom is that potent. 
They're nasty little things. God's going to send the hornet on to them. And oh, by the way, the Philistines, the giants like Goliath, they were a tribe of the Canaanites. Yeah. And guess what? Lots of people have found giant skeletons. When the Smithsonian hears about it, they go in and offer these people huge amounts of money, promise them that they're going to show the, the, uh, the, the skeletons, give them credit for the find. They pay them off, and then next thing you know, the skeletons are never seen again. Never. Because they don't want you to know that there's a possibility that the Bible is real. Verse 21, Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God shall put out these nations before thee by little and little, that thou mayest not consume them all at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. The beasts of the field. Some people think that they're talking about four-legged beasts. Others thinks that uh, might be two-legged beasts. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to any major city and walk around at midnight. All right, verse 23. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. Uh, this is why it's important to be obedient people. Verse 25, The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor, or hate, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Uh, Ouija boards. You don't want to bring that kind of stuff into your house. I mean, really. Now, for all those people, they'll tell you, well, you know, that's the Old Testament God. He was a cruel and evil God who wanted to kill everybody, you know, but, but now we have Jesus. He's, he's that uh, loving and caring God. What? What? They actually teach, I've heard churches teach this stuff. But if you think that the Canaanites now have salvation... Malachi 3.6, For I am the Lord, I change not. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. How about Hebrews 13.8? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. How about Zechariah 14.21? Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. No more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So there's going to be a day when... There's no Canaanites. All right, in 2 Chronicles 7.3, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, now this is the temple, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Boy, here's a good prayer. Psalms 25, 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for, my, for, thy, for thy goodness sake, O Lord. 
Skip to verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. How about Psalms 85, verse 10? Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Psalms 106, 1. Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 107, 1. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. How long's forever? Forever. Here's a really good one. Psalms 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. You know why we need that mercy seat? Oh, yeah, we need that mercy seat. Now, here's a good uh, one. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So if you do evil things and then you, you know, go to the priest and give him a, you know, an animal to sacrifice to cover with the blood, you're not going to prosper, prosper. But if you confess your sins and then turn away from them, which is what repentance is, them, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them, what sins, shall have mercy. And there's people today that'll tell you, well, you know, you know, all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Be a hitman for the mafia. Just believe in Jesus. And you can keep your job as a mafia hitman. I hear it pays really well. I know, I've used that a few times. But, uh, yeah, I've, there's people say, you know, you just come as you are. You know, if there's not a change in somebody's life, they're not saved. They never got saved. They might have said the sinner's prayer, but, you know, there's going to be a change. It may not be immediate, may not be overnight. You know, it's a work in progress. You know, in Matthew 5, 7, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Very important. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 9. I, could, I did an entire... Uh, Bible study on mercy. I mean, it was like just there's, I, I couldn't even tell you how many hundreds of times the word mercy appears in the Old Testament. You know, people say, oh, the whole Testament, that's harsh. But, you know, you know, for his mercy endureth forever. I could show you that phrase probably a couple dozen times. People just, uh, they don't want to bother reading the scriptures. And if they get deceived, well, you know what? That's on them. Because I've been trying to warn people. You know, I've been on YouTube for six or seven years now. And quite honestly, I'm surprised I'm still on YouTube. Father must have something you know, for some reason. But then again, if I had a couple hundred thousand listeners, uh, I'd have been gone, I'm sure. Uh, Matthew 9, 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought, unto him, uh, they brought to him a, a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, see, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. You know, why doesn't Benny Hinn go to a children's hospital and cure all those people, you know, these kids that have got palsy? I mean, you know, listening to 
to him speak, oh, you got palsy because you don't have faith. Boy, I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be Benny Hinn, all his millions he's got in the bank. I wouldn't want to be him on Judgment Day. Uh, 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 no thank you. Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whither is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the, to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Uh, if you don't know it, Matthew was a tax collector. He would have been an IRS agent today in the United States. I don't know what they call him in the UK or in England, I mean, or, or the EU, but uh, yeah. Verse 10. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans, many Republicans, I mean, I'm sorry, re not Republicans, but publicans, and sinners came, oh yeah, those Republicans, they're sinners, uh, and no, I'm, I'm an independent, by the way, just in case you're wondering if I'm a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with republicans and sinners? No, oh, I'm sorry, publicans. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And hopefully some of the Pharisees had the message and said, you know, I'm a sinner and I need to repent. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Oh, yeah. I wonder how many of the people actually understood what he meant by the bridegroom. You know, the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of Christ. Verse 16. No man putteth a piece of cloth unto an old garment, but that which is put in to fill it up, taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Now, ladies probably know this. You know, when you're fixing a, an old piece of uh, clothing that's pre-shrunk, and then you take a new piece of cloth that hasn't shrunk yet, and you sew it to the old garment, well, when the new cloth shrinks, it's going to make the, the tear even worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the new wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Now, people will say, oh, the Mandela effect, and, you know, bottles are glass, and they didn't really have that back then. No, don't fall for that, please. You know, uh... Glass bottles is a modern thing, pretty much. You know, bottles is just a gener generic term. 
You know, it's only been recently that they started using glass for bottles, especially with screw tops and what have you. Um, I don't know. How about Matthew 23, 23? Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Uh, who were the Pharisees? Uh, they weren't Christians and they weren't Romans. Take a guess. Yeah, the you-know-whos. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. In other words, they uh, majored on the minors, and, uh, you know, oh, you got to pay your tithe. But when it came to judgment, mercy, and faith, oh, they didn't, you know, that's, they made that a minor, minor issue. But, you know, tithing, oh boy, you better pay your mint, a tithe of mint. And, uh, yeah, got to keep those shekels coming in. It uh, doesn't sound like anything's changed in 2,000 years, does it? You know? I think I'm going to make this the end of uh, this Bible study. There's... Uh, I got to cover the book of Hebrews, showing where Christ fulfilled the priestly uh, office. I mean, Christ is the king, but he's also our high priest, which is a very important doctrine. So I think it's going to probably end up taking another, at least another 30, 45 minutes. And I don't want to make this too long, so I'm going to close this out. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.